Hello YouTube! In my previous video, I explored the logic blocks in the full release of Besiege. But in this video, I'm taking on the new island of Krolmar. Although I'll be focusing on minimum block zone completions, I'm also going to introduce my biggest vanilla machine ever. The first zone of Krolmar is called Towering Eye. Like the standing stone, it shoots at you, and if you're not quick enough, it'll burn your machine. While I was trying minimum block runs, I found that Krolmar brick is more stable than the brick in Talbrand or Valfross. I couldn't topple it with a single rocket or cannon shot, so I had to settle for a 3 block win using a bomb and a flying spiral. The next zone is called Dahor Vault. While the puzzle zones in the previous islands only have you move objects to a general area, the ones in Krolmar all require precise placement. This zone is like Argus's grounds in reverse. Instead of taking a sword out of the ground, you have to put a key in the ground. This zone is the Forgotten Sanctum. The goal here is to use the laser and mirror to melt the pot of gold. My minimal machine is too light to simply pick up the mirror, so I had to get creative. I set the grabber to grab static so I can hold the ground, and use the wheels to flip the mirror up. While holding the mirror vertical, I can aim it as necessary. Mesa Outpost is the first combat zone in Krolmar. Here, you have to destroy all the cannons to win. When I first played this zone, you also had to kill the attacking soldiers on the ground, but that's since been updated. The machine I'm using for this minimum block run is called the Pepper Mill. The cog in the front is immune to enemy weapons, so you just have to worry about the flying spiral in the back. To take out the soldiers, it's important to get them separated and take them out one at a time, so they don't have a chance to hit the flying spiral. Getting the final cannon takes a lot of patience, until you get this jump just right. Now it's time to destroy the fruit of the Tree of Achmora. Like the scouts of Talbrand with the hot air balloons, this is basically a checkpoint mission, except it doesn't have to be the starting block that hits each goal. This zone introduces a new type of enemy, plant life that does passive damage. The vines at the base of the tree move a little, but they don't actively pursue your machine. However, if you make contact with them, they do damage like the knights do in the other zones. The cacti on the ground can also hurt your machine. Ambush was my most challenging minimum block run in Krolmar. The ground level enemies hit hard enough to break any machine, and pieces of it can fly away fast enough to glitch through the environment. This mechanic seems to work via an explosion between the enemy and the machine rather than an actual hit, so with strategy and luck, it can be exploited. Then there are the enemies at the top, which attack with thrown weapons. At the start of the sim, one of them always slides down and lands at ground level. This seems like something the devs didn't intend, and it also makes it harder to reach that enemy without getting hit. 
I used a modification of my world on a string machine for minimum block flight. Putting the flying spiral on our grabber protects it from the enemy's weapons, while the vacuum provides surprisingly powerful offense. While I was working on this zone, I noticed a glitch with the vacuum. If the vacuum is acting on an object that disappears, it can no longer attract anything else. So I had to be extra careful around the tents, whose fragments disappear after they're destroyed. This glitch can also be reproduced with a grenade or a rocket. Strange Artifact is yet another puzzle zone that requires precise placement of the objects. Something else I noticed about this zone is that while the pieces appear symmetrical, you won't get credit if you put them in backwards. You can put them in at any rotation though, so I guess the trigger to make sure you put the piece in deep enough is on one face and not the other. Kahra's village is a small medieval town waiting to be destroyed. It's a little like the village of Diom in Talbrand, but with tougher buildings and some armed peasants who try to defend their home. Overall, this is a fun place to try out your most sinister engines of destruction. Or in this case, you can be an annoying three block insect that somehow levels an entire village. Something I noticed is that the fires are purely visual in this zone and in ambush. This is surprising since the similar fires in the Martyr Knights are real. Stock Tower is the final puzzle zone in Krolmar. Unlike the previous ones, this one doesn't require precision, but you do have to move a tremendously heavy boulder. To give you an idea of its weight, even the Drag God tool struggles to lift it. I was curious about the exact weight of the boulder, so I ran a couple tests. Apparently, it's equivalent to about 18.7 weight in a sandbox object. Or 350 in a ballast block. For comparison, I did a similar test with the iron ore and found it to be 2.83 sandbox weight, or 8 ballast. I noticed that the ratios don't match up. The boulder is 6.6 .6 times the iron ore in sandbox weight, but 43.75 times the iron ore in ballast weight. So I set up a balance to compare one heavy ballast to two with half the weight number. As expected, they weighed the same. Then I compared one regular iron ore to two with half the weight number. This time, the single object was significantly heavier. So I'm thinking that the sandbox weight numbers are logarithmic, while the ballast weights are linear. Anyway, back to the playthrough. Like the rope and pulley I used earlier, 
the steering hinge seems to move with unlimited force. So it can be used for an elegant minimum block solution for this zone. After all these years, we finally made it. The last stand. This zone includes many types of enemies, plus hard to reach target structures to destroy. So it might surprise you that it can be beaten with a mere three block machine. I really like the idea of having a freighter that properly fights back. But if you attack it first, you can use its debris against the other enemies. The aesthetics of Kromar are as beautiful as the other islands, and the desert motif complements the other environments well. Like in the rest of Besiege, there's also a sense of magic and mysticism, like you're in an enchanted faraway land. This is especially exemplified by the Tree of Achmora. It really feels like it could be the subject of an ancient apocryphal legend. The dramatic winning animations for the puzzle zones also contribute to the sense of wonder. The challenges themselves are fun and unique too, which is impressive given that there are over 50 zones in total. I will say that I would have appreciated another checkpoint zone, like a harder version of Marksman's Pass or the Duke's Prototypes. I often use those to test the maneuvering of my machines, so they have great replay value. Speaking of replay value, I enjoy the novelty of the extremely heavy boulder in the previous zone but there's a limited amount you can do with it in that sparse level. So that boulder would be a welcome addition to the level editor, and maybe somewhere in the sandbox. Then we could come up with our own extreme lifting challenges. Once the enemies are gone, finishing this zone is just a matter of patiently chipping away at the fortress. Many parts of the castle are elevated on top of immobile rocks to keep them out of reach, but you can ramp off of the slope to hit them anyway. It just takes a really, really long time. Before I end this video, I want to revisit the penultimate zone and give you guys a new machine. The Atlas's challenge achievement is for lifting this boulder 10 units off the ground, although I strangely got it just for rolling the stone. So I built a machine just to earn that achievement for real. I proudly present Boulder Dash. This super-powered cargo blimp includes two sets of controls. One for smooth, precise maneuvering, and the other for maximum lift and rotational torques needed for controlling the enormous weight. Not only can Boulder Dash lift the boulder, it can maintain controlled flight with it. Maneuvering well enough to center the load and having enough power weren't the only challenges though. If you try to lift the boulder with only one grabber, the grabber simply breaks off. So I used an 8-point attachment system to distribute the load. The grabbers are on pistons, so you can reach with them to make sure they're all attached. Surprisingly, this vanilla machine moves the enormous mass more easily than the drag god tool. One thing to note is, the flying spirals for tilting are also used for upward thrust. So while making a major angle correction, you need to stop applying lift. I'm pretty sure there's a rule that you can't build a dirigible this big without including plenty of bombs. So this buoyant behemoth comes armed with 10 bombs, enough to level any combat zone from a safe distance. There are also four vacuums and a water cannon for added versatility. In fact, as I experimented with this machine, I found that it can surprisingly beat every zone in the game. So I'm going to upload a separate video running through all 54 zones of Besiege. 
In the meantime, you can try out Boulder Dash at the Steam Workshop, link below. This is Displater's Aerial Sandbox Map, which is great for testing maneuverability, especially for large aircraft. Here, I'm using it to demonstrate using the high power controls to traverse a map quickly. Once you reach the general area you want, you can then use the steady controls for slow precision. For more Besiege action, check out Boulder Dash's All Zones Run after this.